So welcome back to uh, Transcended. In today's tutorial, I'm going to explain a uh, projectile motion. So this topic is one of um, the most simplest topic in physics. It's just a matter of you understanding the question, then know the case. So remember, we have only three cases, but case one it can't come, but case two can come. So case two is a situation where you you throw a ball from the ground. Okay, so from here the ball goes like that. That is what we call case two. Now this case, you discover that you are going to have the H max, the maximum height. This is what we call the range. Then you have the initial speed, of course, they will give you. Then this is the final speed here. Now the formula that I want you to understand is that eh, the formula that we use for us to find the time. So we have point A point B, point C. If they ask you to find the time it reached at point A, or in short, the time it reached at point A, so the time from A all the way to B, it is given by V sine theta divided by G. Now, if you are trying to find the time from A all the way to C, now that, how, how are they going to ask the question? They will say at the time it was in air, or they will say the time of right, or they will say find the time, just like that. If they just say find the time, find the time you took the ball to reach on the ground, then it is the time from A to C. So you, it's the same formula, you just put 2. 2V two sin theta divided by G. You see, right? Now, another formula that I want you to understand is that how do we find the maximum height? So the maximum height which is h max is given by v squared uh, sine squared theta divided by 2g. Now uh, this formula can also, you can just, in case you're having challenges to plug in the values like this, you can use this. Then you put everything in the bracket, you square it, you divide it by 2. The, so this and this, they're actually the same. Okay. Then another one is now how to find the range. So range is given by Vx times in T. But you can use this for the fact that you know that Vx is in V cos theta. So you can say the range is V cos theta times T. For the fact that you know the T already, that T you can get in. So we always use this formula for T when you're finding the range. So you all, you already know that eh, the uh, the formula for time is this one. So you plug in here the time. But again, in a case where you have not been given the time, so which formula can I use for range? So I've not been given the time. This is the best formula I can use. So it is v, okay, sine two theta divided by divided by I've even forgotten. Is it g? Yeah, it's divided by G. So now, to confirm this, I don't want to mislead you. I'm going to to drive the formula. So this is what we call case 2. Case 1, I know, it, it, it can't come. So what happens now here is that the range, since we have said that it is V cos theta times T, so T will replace it by that. So now it will be V. I want to show you where this formula is coming from. But it's not necessary, just know that is this formula, that's all. No one is going to ask you to drive the formula. So in fact here I'm just wasting time. So let's just end here. So case 2 you need to know how to find the, the Vx, which is that one, then how to find the range using that formula. So you can either use this formula or you can use this formula for finding the range. You choose which one is okay with you. Then the time, the total time it was in air, we use this one, the maximum height is this one. These are the only formulas you need to know. Now another concept that is the third case I'm going to explain using this question. So the question is saying a man stands on the roof of the building 50 meters high and throws a stone with a speed of 60 meters per second at an angle of 7 degrees above the horizontal. Calculate A the maximum height above the roof reached by the rock. Then B the maximum of the magnitude of the downward velocity of the rock just before it strike the ground, then C, which is 3, the horizontal distance from the base of the building to the point where the stone 
uh, strike so here they are just talking about uh, the range now this is the third case so third case goes like this you throw a ball from here it goes until it lands here so this is what we call the range so this I'll call this one as capital H of which we've been given that the, this roof is 50 meters high now from here all the way to down here I'm going to call that one as my maximum height I'll call it as H max but again there is another height from this part reaching that part that one I'll just call she small h the angle is 37 degrees and the speed at which it was starting with it is actually 60 meters per second now let's talk more about this the first question that they're going to ask me is to find how high like the way this question is the first question the maximum calculate the maximum height above the roof reached by the so above the roof this is the roof the maximum height now they're talking about h now if you look at this it is exactly the same as this case we are talking about so now this is the combination now from this point here going on top there this is actually the second case that I was explaining under projectile motion which is this one so we use to find that H now is this one so meaning that the formula that I can use for me to find that H is H is equal to a V so I'm going to use this sine theta I'll square this divided by G is it G or 2G? it's 2G did I add 2G here? yes it's 2G so what happens now guys here is this this formula I said it's the same as V squared sine squared theta divided by 2G so now this is the formula that I'm going to use to find this now what if the question is asking me to find the the maximum height from the roof from the ground meaning that I need to get so to find the H max the H max is going to be given by this H that I have here plus the small h so h I already have which is 50 plus h I don't know is the one that I want to find here that is when the question is asking me to find the maximum height from the ground but this question is just asking us to find the maximum height above the roof above the roof meaning from here reaching at that point so that is the maximum height that we want to find so I'll say h is equal to v is 60 sine 37 now I'm going to, to square it I divide by 2 times 9.8 so this is equal to now let's see so we have 60 sine 37 the answer I get I'll square it then divide it 2 times 9.8 is 19.6 so that becomes 66 66.5 3 yeah meters this is the height so the answer for part 1 is h small h is 66.523 meters if you want you can leave your answer in two decimal places you can say 66.52 that's okay okay now the next question is is asking us to find the magnitude of the downward velocity of the rock just before it hit the ground so the magnitude of the downward I'll do it like this the magnitude of the downward so when it's coming down what I want you to understand is that it started from here so it is going that side so the magnitude as it is coming down so it will be the final speed is equal to the initial speed plus now I'll do plus GT but because it was going at this point it was going up then I'll use G as negative so that becomes now we're talking about it when you're talking about downward we're talking about it, the, com, the the velocity in y direction so it will be V final or VY in y uh, VY final VY initial okay now in y direction but initial so this is going to be minus GT because G is now negative because it was going against the gravity when it, uh, when it started from here okay we're not starting from there we're starting from this point so now this becomes the V 
y final is equal to this one is v sine theta okay then minus 9.8 time I don't know now how can I find time I'm going to show you a very simple method on how to find the time so time can be calculated as this the total t for any case as long as this is the case the third case it is given by v sine theta divided by g okay plus the square root of 2 h max the maximum height divided by g so the maximum height is this h okay so then here I need to find now the maximum height we say that the maximum height is as a result of the capital H which is this one because we need to add this and that for us to get H max so I'll say this plus H so that is 50 H is 66.523 so that becomes 50 plus 66.2 Oh, it's five, five, two, three. That becomes one hundred and sixteen point five two three meters. That is the H max. So now let's plug in the values. T will be equal to the V is sixty sine thirty seven divided by nine point eight plus the square root of two times. Just master this formula, guys. For finding the total time, we use this formula. Okay, so H max is uh, 116.23, then you divide it by 9.8. So T will be equal to, now you first say 60 sine 37, then you divide it by 9.8, then 3.685 plus. I explained this the time I was explaining about projectile motion I explained where they are coming from okay so it's not necessary for me to start now so this is five five two three five two three okay so I divide that by nine point eight okay and then it's giving me Four point eight seven. Four point eight seven six. So if I add this, my total time will be equal to eight point five six seconds. That's the time. So it's the one that I'm going to put here now times eight point five six. That's why it's eleven max. So the V final y will be equal to this v is 60 sine 37 minus so you put them in brackets then minus what is 9 times i I'll say 9 times that that gives me 83.9.902 so what I'll do is v final y that becomes 16 sine 37 so the answer I get minus 83.902 so that gives me negative 4 negative 47.793 meters per second now the question is find the magnitude so the magnitude we are getting the answer as positive okay so now I'll say therefore the magnitude of VY final will be equal to 47.79 meters per second done now the question another question the next question is saying find the horizontal the horizontal distance from the base from the base to the point where the stone strike the ground that is the range so how do we find the range remember the range doesn't change so the range in all the cases doesn't change it only changes when you so range is equal to vx times t vx is always v cos theta times t 
So let's plug in the values. V we have, which is sixty, because the angle is at seven. The time is eight point five six. So we have sixty cos thirty seven. The answer I get times eight point five six. So that becomes the range to be equal to forty one point. Oh, four hundred and ten, four hundred and ten point one seven nine. So I can round it off. Four ten point one eight meters. This is the range. So that's the basic idea behind projectile motion. Now I've explained everything. From this concept, I I don't think you can fail to answer any question.